Hey guys, welcome back to part 7 of my 3D modeling tutorial for 3D Studio Max. Today we're going to continue the block out of the M4A1 assault rifle by building the buttstock. And um, just as a quick side note, I am going to be building custom parts from this point on. Um, none of this is going to be like standard military issue M4 stuff anymore. Um, most of the stuff we've built so far is kind of just like the rough outline that you'd need for uh, building a regular M4 if you wanted to, but I've already done that dozens of times before and I just kind of want to do something a little different now. So I'm going to build this custom Magpul CTR buttstock for the, uh, the M4. And uh, most of the stuff I'm doing here is going to be pretty similar to what you build anyway for a standard buttstock. So um, with that said, I'm just going to select the rod that we had here and shift. I'm going to hold shift and drag that into the position I want, which is flush with the uh, reference image edge here of our buttstock. And I'm just going to name that to buttstock. Make sure it's a copy, not an instance. And then I'm going to convert to an editable poly. Before I go to any of the sub-selection groups, I'm just going to scale that up a little bit to get the uh, thickness. Oop, that is not what I wanted to do. And um, there we go. Once I have that, I'm just going to move this into position. Bring that out to the end here. Connect it. And the only reason I'm adding this edge here is because later on we're going to be extracting or ex extruding a, uh, a ring of edges, which is this outer one here for this lip or notched edge or whatever here that you get at the end of the buttstock. So now I'm going to hold shift and drag this cylinder down one more time. I'm not going to worry about the name this time. And I'm just just going to scale that inward. And really what I'm trying to do is just keep the uh, bottom half and the top half of these two cylinders and we're going to um, bridge them together to kind of get a similar egg shape to what we had here at the end of our receiver. Um, yeah, and I think that's going to do. Um, next thing I'm going to do is delete the top half of my uh, smaller cylinder. I'm going to select these um, vert points down here. Do a little bit of editing. Um, I'm going to throw another edge loop in here. Oh, I do not want to detach that. I want to connect them. Throw an edge constraint on. And then turn it back off really quick. Connect it one more time. Throw another edge constraint on. Um, and then turn the edge constraint back off. And then do it one more time. and then turn it off again. There we go. Now we should all have kind of like this um, cylindrical shape here. And um, actually what I want to do now is delete yeah that's good. The outer three edges here Oops, before I do that, I want to throw another edge loop in here, actually. <clears throat> and that's going to be this one that kind of falls in line on the end of our, um, I guess, that little switch that you use to um, to retract and um, expand the uh, buttstock. So now that we have that, now I can delete these two lines. Loop that. That looks like we need to get rid of one more. All right. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I wanted to keep. And also, don't worry about the other side because I'm going to throw a symmetry modifier on that, or at least I'm going to cut it in half. And then once we have this attached to the uh, main cylinder, we're going to throw a symmetry modifier onto it. Um, so now I'm going to, actually before I attach it, I'm just going to delete the bottom half of this cylinder. There we go. 
Now we attach. Um, also have to cut this one in half. And now the symmetry modifier. There we go, that worked perfect. Now to editable poly mode. Connect. Now I'm going to just make those even on the z-axis there, or make planar. Um, <clears throat> going to select this vert here and um, target weld that together. There we go. And now we're ready to to build the uh, flat inside edge of this um, whole bottom portion of the uh, buttstock there. All right. Now I just want to extrude this one. All right, so what I just did there was I brought the uh, top line here kind of in line with the uh, the bottom end of this. Um, you'll see the highlight in my reference image is kind of getting brighter here for the flat face, um, this portion of the, the uh, buttstock, and then this is going to be an inset, which is going to connect the, um, the outer rings of the cylinder to the inside here. Um, so now I'm just going to do a little bit more editing here and there. Okay. Yeah, and this line just pretty much had to be in line with the top end of our cutout in the center of the buttstock there. Um, I'm just going to bring this up. Um, target weld that together. Shift extrude again. just do a little bit of moving here and there to kind of make everything fit. Connect. All right. Throw another edge loop in there. Make sure that you get the top cylinder and that bracket piece right there and uh, kind of make planer there or flatten it and then bring that in turn on an edge constraint oh and it looked like something didn't weld together here there we go all right and everything's looking pretty good so far. Next thing I'm going to do is work on the uh, back end here. Bridge that together. Connect it. Um, now I'm going to bring that in. Oops. Forgot that the edge constraints are still on. I want to turn those off. Ring those two edges. Connect. There we go. that in place. Um, I'll just kind of create the uh, back face of the, uh, the shoulder rest there. And then flatten that on the x-axis, bring it up to the y value 0. Bridge, there we go. All right. A 
and then I'm going to shift drag that outward um, another thing I need to do is bring the line here at least these verts right here all except for the very last one here down yep there we go another thing I'm gonna do is bring this line in and uh, then we can bridge them together actually it looks like I need one more edge loop in here um, just throw that in there There we go. And we'll bridge that. Oops, something's not connecting for some reason. Hmm. There we go. This time it worked for some odd reason. All right. So now we're starting to get somewhere with this buttstock. It's really starting to look like it's coming together. Um, another thing I need is to connect this bridge. All right. edge up here. Oops, that collapse. Throw an edge constraint on there. Well, maybe I'll turn that edge constraint back off. Do it myself. Just eye it. Hmm. What I kind of want is, I guess we can just target weld that to it. Yeah, something kind of like that. Just um, make it even with, I guess, the uh, the edge I just created. There we go. Um, next, I'm going to close this area off here. There we go. And then I'm going to flatten out, or at least throw the, uh, the face here onto um, the end of my buttstock. So we're starting to get a closed piece. There we go. Bridge that. Bridge that. All right. Now I'm going to select the, oops, looks like something again needs to be welded here. All right, there we go, Oop, not cap it. Now I'm gonna shift and drag that inward, bring it to the Y value zero. And now when we turn our symmetry modifier on, or at least deselect our object so it automatically turns on, um, we'll get this result. And uh, so far we're looking pretty good. There's a few more things that we need to finish with. Um, for one being, we have to close this face off in the back here. And then also we have to do some um, um, smoothing groups here. And I'm actually going to take the time to show you the smoothing groups that I did on this one because this one is a little bit of a confusing shape to uh, smooth out. So I'm going to go back into editable poly mode and we're going to need another edge here. Connect. I'll bring that up to be kind of even with this. All 
cap this off actually. Now I just have to bring this in a little bit. There we go. And then the rest of these we're going to flatten out the same way. Um, actually to kind of keep that that shape I have to copy the top edge of this all right and then I'll bring this face or this one down here There we go. Um, connect. There we go. Now we should have something that looks somewhat like this. Um, the reason I'm kind of evened all of those points out is because the uh, slight curve here that you see from the front view um, is maintained by keeping those edge points the same exact height as the lines out here that set that curve. Um, I'm going to do the same again here. create the curves in here. And another thing I have to create is this little thing down here. Might as well just get that out of the way real quick. Actually, I need the edge constraint on for that little shift that I just did. There we go. Now connect these two points here. And... I'm just going to bring this outward just a little bit. Well, maybe I'll put it on the same point here. Control. I'm just going to leave that alone for a moment. Maybe I'll get a better eye on it later. I um, just can't seem to be getting it exactly how I want it at the moment. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is now round out these corners on the inside here. And um, I'm just going to do that by chamfering. Um, 
actually need the front view handy for that. Chamfer, I'm going to set this to, let's see how well we get that, well, maybe one more edge. Yeah, that should be good. Don't worry about the funky geometry, I'll fix that in just a second. Do the same thing up here. Chamfer, yeah, good enough. Well, not quite good enough, I need to actually up the value here. And then I'm going to chamfer this little line here. Alright. So now what I'm going to do is clean up the, uh, the mess that I just made here. I just target welding. until I get back to um, kind of close to the results that I had before. Um, all right. There we go. There we go. Um, now I can get rid of this little triangle in here. And well, I guess we created another triangle up there, but we can always fix that by throwing either another line in there or whatever. Um, now I just want to make sure that my corners are actually looking really good too. So I'm going to turn the edge constraints back off. just going to kind of finesse that a little bit here and there. There we go. That one looks pretty good. Um, clean that up a little. And this one's going to need a lot more cleaning. Um, there we go. And now I'm just going to clean up the geometry on this here as well. And um, now I'm just going to clean up that geometry a little here and there. There we go. Connect those two points. And I'm really just trying to work more towards quads again, instead of um, having all this really funky geometry in here. Um, doesn't have to be all in uh, four-sided polygons, but you know it, it really does look a lot better, and it's easier to manipulate once we're working on our, um, our high-poly version. Um, triangles normally don't work too well with the uh, smoothing modifier we're going to use. Um, connect that. All right. 
and I'll throw one more in there, why not? And then just to finish the bottom here. Alright, so now that we have that mostly cleaned up, oops, I did notice I have a triangle here and I shouldn't have one. There we go. Alright, um, now that we have that kind of cleaned up, I'm going to show you some smoothing groups that I use to, to finish my shape off with. Um, this is pretty far uh, in a, and a pretty decent block out that we have so far, so really what I want to do is just move on from this point and um, we'll work, e work on the small details later on with the high poly. So let's get into this and I'll work on the smoothing groups. Oops, actually I did forget one little thing again. Um, ring that and I'm gonna convert that selection to face. You'll see that we have the uh, end edge here. What I forgot to do is convert that um, or extrude this little lip or notched edge at the end like I said earlier. And I want that set to local norm. Bring that back down. And 0.5 looks like a reasonable extrusion. Yep, that's pretty good. All right. And there we go. All right, so now I can work on this here. I'm going to give this portion one single um, smoothing group. I'm going to start from one, just work my way around. Oops that off and uh, I'm just going to use the selection tool. You can press Q on your keyboard for that. That way you don't end up accidentally shifting lines like I did here a second ago. Um, let's see, I'm going to give this smoothing group 2. Actually this should have been part of it as well so clear and press 2. There we go. So now we have an even flowing edge here and it goes into the uh, back end of our shape. There we go. Now the front face here is going to be smoothing group 3. Alright, that looks good. Um, here we've got smoothing group 1 again. this smoothing group 2. Actually, maybe smoothing group 2 isn't a good idea, mainly because of this little corner right here. I don't want that connected to the other end. There we go. That's good. Two. This can remain on smoothing group 4. That's good right there. This one is going to have to change to smoothing group 1. Smoothing group 4 is fine for that. Now I need the inside here to all be the same smoothing group. Seems like I didn't actually put a smoothing group on this. So um, all of the edges on this flat face are going to be selected. I'm going to turn this into smoothing group one. And uh, 
then I'm going to select the top or deselect the top portion and uh, make it stop right here at the uh, part where it starts to curve. I'm going to turn that into smoothing group 2. All right. Now I'm going to give this a new smoothing group. Oops, not two. I want to work with three. Give that four. Or actually, this entire thing is going to get smoothing group four. All right. And then I'll give this whole thing here I've got an easier way to select that actually. I'm going to ring that outer edge from when we extruded, convert that to face. Oops, and I don't want that. I'm going to do that one more time. Convert to face. And then I'll just select the little faces that we had in here. All right, and I'm going to give that all one smoothing group, and um, I think I'm just going to go with smoothing group five. There we go. Now what we have is the block out of our buttstock. Um, we did pretty good here. Um, just a few minor tweaks still need to be done. Um, mainly pushing stuff like this in to uh, create the shape that we need. And um, with that, I think I'm going to call this tutorial finished, or at least this portion of the tutorial finished. Um, I'm going to save out. And um, <clears throat> next time, we will be working on custom parts. We're just going to block out um, as much as we can. If you have a bunch of custom attachments or reference for them already handy, I would suggest just starting on them already, at least working on rough block outs and then we'll just continue giving them detail in the next tutorial. So just don't forget to save that out, and I'll see you back next time.